Hey there, this is Helen. I'm a bit hot and sweaty because I just finished recording a yoga video, but you know, this is the real life. I could go and put loads of makeup on, but here I am in the flesh, in the jungle. Today's video is five things that I think you should know about stress. Because I experienced stress for many years and it's taken me a long time to actually truly understand how to deal with it. And I think I've got to the bottom of it now. So the first thing is, which is something I never realized, you won't just be able to switch out of a stress state. I used to be highly stressed in my job and when I'd come home or on my days off I would do yoga to try and counteract the effects of it because I knew there had to be some kind of balance, you know, the yin and the yang. And I would really struggle doing a stress relieving yoga practice because I was so tightly wound up. I did not know how to relax. I couldn't relax. I needed to be brought out of that state gently and probably over a period of time in order to be able to access that relaxation response in my body. Instead what I was doing was I was feeding more and more into my stress state by doing high intensity yoga classes because not all yoga classes are created equally. So if you are in that highly stressed state and you are proactively trying to do things to help reduce it and you're doing things like trying meditation, trying yoga, trying breath work and you're finding it really difficult, that is the reason because you can't just switch out of it. So what is the answer? I believe the answer is to still continue doing those high intensity things like for example me with yoga I needed to get that fix initially at the beginning of the class. I needed to be throwing myself around doing tons of sun salutations and chaturangas. What I should have done is started like that and then gradually brought my body down over a period of minutes, maybe 10 minutes, 20 minutes, gently into that relaxed state. I was never going to be able to start lying there breathing, really gentle stretches. In my mind, I was so frustrated. I tried it many times and I'd be thinking, I'd actually be thinking to the teacher, oh, for goodness sake, just get on with it. I can't bear it. It's because my nervous system wouldn't allow me to relax. So meet yourself where you are. Acknowledge that you are in this frazzled kind of state. Do something to help release all this pent up tension, maybe emotion, and over a period of time, 20, 30 minutes, gradually descend into a more relaxing phase of your movement, of your exercise, whatever you're doing. Bring yourself down slowly. Don't expect to be able to just do some relaxing practice because you won't, you'll be frustrated. I experienced this for years and when I did my yoga teacher training for stress, burnout and fatigue, that's when my eyes were really opened as to where I'd been going wrong all those years. So I learned the hard way. Start meeting yourself where you are at that frazzled level, doing intense movements if that's what your body's craving, that's where your nervous system is, and then gradually bring yourself down. I think you'll find it a lot more beneficial. The second thing is, if you're stressed in the workplace, you're feeling frazzled. I, I remember a time where I was sitting in my office and I was getting called on the radio because I used to be a police officer. I was getting messaged on my phone. I was getting emails. I was getting instant messages appear up on my computer. I was also getting people coming into my office and everybody wanted something from me. And I felt like I was being pulled pillar to post and I was in such a frazzled state and I would sit at my desk and I'd be getting more and more wound up, more and more frustrated and feeling like there was no end in sight. What I should have done because I've got all this pent up, you know, cortisol and adrenaline in my, my system, like the stress response, get up and walk around, get out of your chair, go for a walk, let off some steam get rid of it out of your system because the reason it's flooding your system is it's preparing you for that fight or flight mode, it's preparing you for an attack. 
it's preparing you to be able to run away quickly whatever the threat is that's coming at you and that threat nowadays is you know it's not a saber-toothed tiger or woolly mammoth whatever it was back in the day when we were early humans the threats are very different now and they're not really threats to our life they're, they're almost like threats to our sanity because we're getting pushed to these levels where we can no longer cope so we need to get rid of that out of the system getting up and walking around moving around dissipating it is probably the best thing you can do go for a five minute walk let off some steam do a couple of deep breaths and then come back centered ready to deal with whatever is there and also one of my yoga teachers and I did a training with him said and he, he spoke very methodically and very slowly he said I realized long ago nothing ever good came from rushing so he was very like slow in his delivery and you would ask him a question he would really pause before he answered you could see he was really thinking nothing good ever comes from rushing take a pause take a breath then respond and you'll find you'll feel a lot less stress because sometimes the stress that we experience is what we put on ourselves always over functioning because we feel that we have to deal with something and respond to people immediately and we don't we don't have to so that's the second thing the third thing is doing little things to reduce stress to bring about that relaxation response in the body throughout the day is a lot better than getting more and more wound up not doing anything to address it and then maybe at the weekend doing a long yoga class or going for a long walk in nature it's much better to spread it out do little things during the day over a period of days than one big long hit at the weekend or on your days off because you want to train your body to be able to relax and you're not going to do that if you're living in this fight or flight mode all week and then at the weekend you're going to try and switch off and like I said in the first earlier you can't just switch it off because this is how you are it's how you're wound up so try and do little things during the day if you're at work and you're stressed get up and walk around go out and eat your lunch outside if the weather allows it get up and stretch every now and then do a few deep breaths just do something and looking away from a screen as well because if you think about how often we look at a screen how many hours of the day we're we looking at a screen even when we believe we're relaxed and we're not we're on our phones scrolling through social media how many times do you watch a film and at the same time you're looking on your phone or you're looking on your ipad i do it myself i think what has happened where i've got i can't even focus my intention on one thing we're so overstimulated so try and find little moments during the day where you can just switch off recharge and then go back to whatever you were doing it's much better to do little things than be frazzled all week and then at the weekend think i'm going to do this i'm going to have a long walk put it in during the day little snacks of wellness and the fourth thing is to actually identify something called micro stressors what they are in your life because when we think of stress we think of you know the big three stressors moving home getting married or getting divorced and then we feel stress at work pressure from the boss not enough resources too much work not enough breaks but there's other things that stress us as well and these build up over time so micro stressors are things like having all the wires underneath your computer all tangled up piles of laundry not put away clutter is your garden overgrown think of all the different aspects of your life and where there are these little micro stresses because we may not even realize that they're causing us stress things like emails that are unanswered i, I think in my inbox I've probably got over 6,000 unanswered emails, unopened emails rather. And they're just sitting there, but it stresses me out when I look down and I see that little red circle with, I don't know, 6,437 unread emails. I know there's probably nothing of value. And if I delete them all now, 
I know my life would go on. But these are the little micro stressors, and I've actually created a guide to help you identify these little micro stressors in your life. I've been doing. I've identified 11 areas of our lives where we've got these micro stressors. If you want this guide, you can click the link under the video and get it. It's totally free. You can print it off or use it on maybe an iPad with an app like GoodNotes and an iPencil. And just see if you can identify some of these micro stressors in your life and then focus on maybe three of them for each area just see how you can do it I know myself I will have laundry that I've washed and dried and it's just sitting on the sofa in my bedroom and it sits there and then I go to get I think I want some yoga pants so I dive into it and find it and it gets all messed up instead of me putting it away in the wardrobe where I know specifically where it is and where it's outside out of mine I haven't got that visual clutter that can also add to your stress so get hold of my guide and see if you can identify the micro stresses in your life. And the last thing is tech stress or digital stress. This is what I recommend you do because we never used to have this problem like back in the 80s when we didn't really have computers and now everything is digital and it becomes really overwhelming when you've got all these different things stored in different places. I want to give you three actions that I think if you do them really make a difference to how you feel. The first one is social media. Unfollow three accounts that make you feel bad about yourself. I will often go on Instagram and I, I get in my feed a lot of yoga accounts and I see them and I see these really bendy women, very long limbed and slim doing all these really advanced poses and I think gosh you know I've had a regular practice since 2008 I actually first started practicing in the 80s I can't do any of these what they're doing what is wrong with me there's nothing wrong with me what I'm doing is I'm comparing myself to somebody else I actually did a yoga teacher training very recently for somatics and the teacher she gave a statistic that I'd never heard before but I kind of believe it's true she said that 80% of people that do yoga come from a background of either gymnastics, dance, or they're hypermobile. And the reason the percentage is so high is because it's easy for them. So they're gravitating towards something that comes with ease. And I think back to all the sort of yoga festivals I've been to and hundreds and hundreds of yoga classes and I think it's true I never even considered it before so I cannot compare myself to someone that's been a dancer all their lives or a gymnast or even someone that's hypermobile I just don't have it in my body you know I'm I'm very stiff in places so why am I comparing myself to somebody that spent a lifetime probably since the age of like three or four working on their mobility and flexibility so unfollow three accounts that make you feel bad about yourself. Even those accounts where, even the travel ones where you see people traveling all over the world and they're always in a new location and everything looks so wonderful. It makes you feel bad. It makes you feel like you've got a boring life. I mean, I live in Costa Rica and even I look at some of those accounts and think, God, oh, my life's so boring. And I think I actually live in paradise. I've got one of the world's best beaches, a five minute drive from where I live. Why am I not satisfied with that? Just because I've seen a stro stranger on social media doing something which I believe is really exciting, but it's just the highlight reel of somebody's life. I could post videos of going to the beach every day, and sometimes I do, and people look at them and think, God, oh, look at that, what a wonderful life. But they forget all the other, you don't know the other things behind the scenes that are going on, the challenges that you experience living somewhere like that. So unfollow three social media accounts. And the second thing, I've already touched on this, go to your email inbox and look at the last three emails that you never opened. Who did they come from? Why haven't you opened them? And what I like to do sometimes is I'll highlight one of these emails and then I'll rearrange my inbox in alphabetical order so you see all the emails from this sender 
and I guarantee there's probably 10, 20, 30, 40, even more that you've never opened. I mean, who are they that's sending you? I, I end up, if you download somebody's like freebie, a PDF, and you end up on their email list and then you get all of their emails, well, you may have downloaded that thing three years ago and the, it's not relevant to you anymore. That's why you're not answering their emails, why you're not open, opening them. So look at the last three different emails that you haven't opened. Do you really need to be subscribed to that list? What would happen if you unsubscribed? It would make a big difference. I do a lot of unsubscribing. I mean, I, I have an email list and I email my subscribers. I do it once a week, if that. But I try to send something of value. I'm not bombarding people with stuff. I recently signed up for a live challenge and I'm not joking. I got absolutely bombarded with emails. I made the mistake of, I was invited to some channel on, I don't even understand how this works, on Messenger. I was getting like 10 messages a day from this woman. Some of them were voice notes, which were clearly not personal to me. I don't know how she was doing it. She was probably do, sending them to everybody. And I couldn't stop it. In the end, I had to block her on Facebook and Messenger just to stop these messages because there was no way to opt out. It was causing me stress. I don't need that. So go to your inbox, unsubscribe from the last three emails that you've never opened. And the last thing is something that I have really embraced lately. It's say no to people and maybe have a think about those people that are always asking you for things and wanting your help. Just have a little bit of time reflecting about when was the last time you asked them for something? Is it a one-sided relationship? Is it reciprocated? Or are there people that are always wanting things from you? Are they always calling you, asking your advice? How many times do you do the same back to them? Probably not many, not many times, because a lot of these friendships with draining people are very one-sided. And I would have a little think about who is the person that's always reaching out? What are they reaching out for? Are they reaching out for when they want something or are they genuinely interested in you in a person? and start to say no. When you install boundaries like that, your life can be a lot less stressful. When you're living for you and you don't feel obligated to always meet somebody else's needs, inconveniencing yourself for their benefit. Somebody recently asked me to do something for them. I haven't heard from this person for months. And they sent me a long voice note about how can I, they asked me to do this specific thing. And I thought, well, why should I? Why should I inconvenience myself for your benefit when you haven't even had the courtesy to contact me and ask me how I'm doing or even want to meet with me for something social? In fact, the only time that you've contacted me is because you want a free service from me. So start to say no. Anyway, that's my little public service announcement about stress. I hope you found it helpful and if you want to get my free guide which is about micro stressors you'll find the link under this video. I won't bombard your inbox I'm very mindful of that. <laughs> if you want you can unsubscribe straight away as soon as you receive it but I think it'll be very helpful. Anyway stay stress-free and I will see you soon.